So we go to chapter three, enterprise and entrepreneurship. So we talk about enterprise. Enterprise is just the skills, the knowledge, the entrepreneurs, they use when they are put organizing factors of production. And when we talk about factors of production, we're talking about the land, the labor, capital, and enterprise, our entrepreneur, enterprise itself. So as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, you need an enterprise. Why do you need an enterprise? You need to organize these factors of production. And the only way you can organize factors of production is to start thinking. You need that skill, that knowledge to be able to put them together. That is what an enterprise is. So who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is that individual who has taken the risk to set up a business. I think that is clear. Yes. So we go to the advantages of being an entrepreneur. So what are, the, what are the things you gain if you are an entrepreneur? Number one, able to choose how to use time and money. So as an entrepreneur, you are independent. It means whatever you want to use your time for, whatever you want to use your money for, no one is going to question you. That is being able to use your time and money. Do you understand it? That means whatever you need, your, whatever you want to use your money for, whatever you want to use your time on, whatever you want to spend your time on, no one is going to question you because it's yours. Your time, your money belongs to you. So that means you are independent. Number two, able to put own ideas into practice as an entrepreneur. So whatever ideas you have, you, you will be creative. Whatever ideas you have, you can use it. Nobody's going to question you. Nobody's going to ask you why you are doing it that way. Why you, want, you choose to do it this way. It's your money. It's your business. So nobody's going to question you about that. The third one may become famous and successful if the business grows. Look at Bill Gates today. Look at Carlos Tim and the rest of Aliko Dangote. They started small, but when their business grows, when their business grow, when it expanded, they become successful and famous. Do you understand? So as an entrepreneur, you will start small, yes. But if your business expands, if your business grow. You become successful, then you become famous. Wait, like we get. Or, uh, yeah, okay. Aliko Dangote yes. and the rest. Lots of people. Not yeah, business. the fourth one. Income might be higher than working as an employee. Being an entrepreneur, you might make more money than working for other people or working for other companies. Mm -hmm. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. The fifth one, able to make use of personal interest and skills. Whatever you want to do, whatever skills you're good at, you might be able to use it because now, okay, this is what you know how to do. You know how to barb. You can start investing on barbing. You can have a barber shop here and there. You can have a, a beauty for a beauty uh, beauty place because that is what you know how to do. But if you have a skill and you don't have money to invest on that skill, then you would you won't be able to work on your own. You have to work for people. But because you are an entrepreneur, whatever skills you have, whatever interest you have, you'll be able to invest on them. So you choose to have a viewing center where they show football. That is your interest. It's your money. You put it in there. That is an Maybe advantage for you to be an entrepreneur. Is it clear? We go to the problems of being an entrepreneur. Number one, risk that the business might fail. The, the business is likely to fail. Why? Because you are investing. And investment, maybe, maybe not, it might not yield return. So if it does not yield return, that means all the money you put into the business has gone. So it's risk. It is risky to start up a business on your own because you're going to put all your savings into it. And if it fails, then all your savings is gone. All your savings are gone. Do you understand? Is it clear? The second one, entrepreneurs have to put their own savings into the business. No one is going to borrow you money when you're starting up the business. Nobody trusts you. So it means that you have to strive the only way you can start up this business is to put your own ad on money. If not, nobody's going to be, give you money. Nobody's going to borrow you because you'll be considered as high risk. Nobody can trust you. You need the trust of people. You need the trust of banks before they can say, yes, they can give you money. So that means you have to be in the business for so long before you can, you can gain the trust of financial institutions. But at the start, it is difficult because you have to find your own source of income. You understand? or sources of finance. The third one, lack of knowledge and experience in starting and operating a business. As an entrepreneur, you're starting a new business. You, you don't know how the business runs in that industry. Yes, it's your own business, but you are not the only one in the business. There is a culture in that business, in that industry. There are other businesses that have set up before. There, there are existing business in that industry. So they might have edge over you because they know in and out of the business that you, you are just starting it. 
So because of what the, because of the experience they have, because they are into the business for so long, they might use that against you. Do you understand? Is it clear? The fourth one, loss of income from not being an employee of another business, opportunity cost. If you're an entrepreneur, it means you might not be able to work for other companies. You might not be able to work with other businesses. That means you won't be able to get money from other sources than your own source. Mm -hmm. That is opportunity, opportunity cost. You choose being an entrepreneur and you forgot or you, you reject or you ignore working as an employee. So working as an employee becomes the opportunity cost. Is it clear? Because when you work as an employee, you get paid for it. And if the business goes down, it might not affect you. Do you understand? Any question about the advantages and disadvantages of being an entrepreneur? It's clear, right? So we'll go to the characteristics now. For the characteristics of entrepreneur. So for you to be a successful entrepreneur, you need to possess the following characteristics or features. Number one, effective communicator. Being an effective communicator means that you should be able to communicate with your stakeholders. You should be able to tell them the aims. You should be able to effectively communicate to them the aims and objectives of the business. You must be able to convince them that, oh, these are our aims, these are our objectives. These are the missions of the business. Do you understand? You must be able to dispatch information, correct and positive information to your stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Those that your business decision would, could affect directly or indirectly. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? The second one, hard working as an entrepreneur. For you to be successful, you must be able to work long hours. You must always be present at the work because it's your, it's your business. So you must be willing to sacrifice your time to get things done the right way. You must be punctual. Is it clear? The third one, risk taker. As an entrepreneur, it was able to, you must be able to take decisions about, you know, you have to take decisions about what you have to produce in terms of goods or services. And taking decisions about what to produce means that it's risky because you are producing for customers who might not buy. You can't force them to buy, yes or no? Because you cannot force them to buy because they have to buy based on their instincts. It becomes a risk for you. So you, there's nothing you could do if they don't buy. That is why it, it is risky. Do you understand what the risk is here? Yes. You don't know what could happen. They may not buy. You could produce and nobody is buying. Maybe, maybe you will maybe. maybe, maybe not. So because it is one over two, it becomes a risk. Is it clear? Maybe there or this or this, maybe. Yeah. Yes. So that's why it is risky. So you have to take risk. The fourth one, as an entrepreneur, you have to be optimistic. Talking about optimis optimism, it means that for you to be an entrepreneur, you must be able to look forward to the future. Like you look forward to a better future. You don't always think about failure, failure, failure. Like, oh, ah, if maybe I will fail. Don't think about failure. Don't think about it. Because when you continue to think about failure, you would fail. So think about a better future. Even if you are down, stand up again. Even if you are down, if you are down for the seventh time, stand up the eighth time. That makes you a successful entrepreneur. So when you fail, don't think about it that way. Think about the future that is going to be better. Is it clear? The, the fifth one, self the sixth one. Yeah, no, the fifth one, self-confidence. As an entrepreneur, you must, be, you must have the ability to convince stakeholders that the business will be a success. You must be able to have, you must have that ability to convince your stakeholders, the employees, the government, the banks, the, the investors, whoever it is the community that the business will be a success story. You must have the ability to convince them. That is self-confidence. Do you understand what self-confidence is now? Then the sixth one, creative. As an entrepreneur, you must be able to bring up new ideas about products, about service, about how to, how to, uh, how to ways in which you can attract customers. As an entrepreneur, you must be able to come up with new ideas on how to produce goods or services and ways in which you can attract new customers. That is being creative. So as an entrepreneur, for you to be successful, you must be creative. And being creative means having new ideas on how to produce good, new goods or services or new ways of attracting your customers. Is it clear? Because it is only when you are able to attract your customers that they will buy your product. And buying your product will increase your revenue. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Is it clear? Yes, yes. 
Then the seventh one, innovative. As an entrepreneur, you must be able to put new ideas into practice. You don't just think about new ideas. Put them into what? Practice. Put them into what? Practice. That makes you, that makes you to be what? Innovative. Creative means uh, coming up with new ideas. Innovative means being able to use or put these new ideas into practice in an interesting way. Is it clear? And the last one, independent. So as an entrepreneur, you must be able to work without help. You must be able to do things without the need of people. You must be able to think on your own. You must be able to do things without needing, needing the help of people. Do you understand independence here? So if you are able to do all these things, then you can become a successful entrepreneur. Any question about entrepreneur? No. Are you sure? Yes. You understand what an entrepreneur is? No. That person who takes the risk to set up a business. An enterprise is the office of an entrepreneur or the skills, knowledge of entrepreneurs to organize the factors of production. Then the, the, the characteristic, the features of entrepreneur, you must be self-confident, you must be creative, you must be innovative, you must be hardworking, you must, you must take risks. So all these are what it entails to become what a successful entrepreneur. I think it's clear.